Well, we'll see, but, but I, I guess this will be a, a, a relatively speculative uh, talk. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if this is uh, uh, how it was intended by organizers, but uh, it probably be more conjectures than new results in particular. So. Uh, okay. Uh, and the yeah, the, 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 this title is, is very, very general, so I was thinking uh, maybe, maybe like a theme, general theme would be, yeah, to, to try to use Mojang there in uh, more uh, in, in some situations that uh, don't always, uh, don't always, uh, especially in complex analysis, both Mojamper, I don't know, or maybe it's the other way around to use some things for to you to get used to for Mojamper. Anyway, okay, so I'll be do I will be talking both about real and complex. I start with complex. Um, so let me consider this uh, uh, Euclidean setting, so bounded domain and the plurisub harmonic function that vanishes on the boundary. Uh, well, and whose Mont-Jean-Pair is given by some density. I mean, essentially equivalent, you can think of U, at least for now, as smooth. Uh, it's not. So, the trivial estimate is this. Uh, so, this is immediately from comparison principle, just compar comparing this U with the modulus of Z squared. Now, uh, in fact, this is quite related to the infinity estimate in the proof of Yau. So this, this uh, the one of the proofs uh, gives you first by you know quite elementary way a localization to the Euclidean setting, uh, and then you have to get a certain estimate. And, and what you need really is almost something like that with a difference that, that you need the constant, I mean, you need the constant to be better uh, slightly. So somehow uh, to ensure that uh, uh, it goes to zero uh, as, as volume goes to, uh, goes to zero. That's, that's kind of crucial. You cannot just rely on the diameter. That if, and I guess this, when I notice, I haven't been very active, as you know, for the last few years, but I, but I noticed that actually this kind of, uh, this estimate has been, it's been used in various situations, so, uh, okay. Uh, okay, now, this, that you can have uh, volume going, I mean, that you have the dependence on volume, uh, follows in particular from the definitely non-trivial, like the first one was, was, was trivial, but this is non-trivial uh, local estimate of this kind. So now you have the dependence on the diameter still, but if you use Helder continue or whatever, as you obviously see that, uh, that you can get in the first estimate Dependent, this dependence on the volume, provided that the diameter is under control. Uh, so now I have uh, my first conjecture, is that you should have something like that without any control, I mean, without caring about diameter. Well, it has to be, if u is zero on the boundary, it has to be like hyperconvex. But so equivalent to you, you, say, you can say strongly superconvex bounded. It's no difference because by approximation, so uh, you can get. So what if n is one? Can you see oh, exactly. Very good question. But because, you see, But, but, you know, in fact, and this is, 
not so completely trivial. And I kind of realized recently that people, even when they do n equal 1, often miss the following result, which reduces this thing to a radial symmetric functions. Uh, so this is, uh, I think it's, it's quite often overlooked. Uh, so this is uh, this, this result by Talenti from the 70s, well, generally for Laplacian, uh, which says that if you, well, you have this, this Dirichlet problem and you symmetrize the right-hand side. It's a Schwarz symmetrization, right? So, uh, and then they solve corresponding problem in the, in the symmetrized domain. Symmetrized domain meaning ball with the same volume, center of the origin, and functions having, you know, whose sub -level, super level set in this case are uh, positive, are, uh, they have the same volume. So, so then it's, this V is radially symmetric, uh, obviously, and the result is that it has to be below the symmetrization of, of U star. So in fact, not only this original estimate with L infinity norm, but if you want to have any estimate for you know, LP norm of F, since symmetrization preserves LP norms, and, and in fact, other norms, two uh, other really, so, so, so it could be even useful for yeah, the uh, openness conjecture. Well, okay, but that's, let's not talk about that. Uh, uh, this result reduces all these kind of estimates to radially symmetric functions. And then, then it's very simple. You can, you can get, uh, okay. I mean, for L infinity norms, this specific estimate. And uh, in fact, for... How does the Talenti result uh, reduce the original problem? Because you get an estimate for a U star. Yes. But you want an estimate for a U star. No, well, the, the L infinity norm that is bound by... The, the L infinity norm of U star is the same as the L infinity norm of U. So, and then, okay, so get this precise. So now domain has no restriction, it doesn't have to be. Uh, uh, the other way around. Yes. 
fact, yes. But Omega is not regular star. But Omega star is a regular star. Yeah, Omega star. <laughs> yeah, Omega star the, the thing is that the volume of Omega star is PR squared. No, they are in the both defined in the whole. Yeah. Okay. So in fact, yeah, um, the I've been thinking a lot about the symmetrization problem in the in the, for the complex motor equation. Now, I, in fact, I have to write it down that in such a generality. mentioned for the real Mojampere by Talenti again in dimension two and so in, in higher dimensions, they are not completely satisfactory to my purposes, as I will show you. Uh, yeah, but the general, I have a, another general conjecture. So say in uh, Kowodzie's local LP estimate, the constant should be really determined by radially symmetric functions. So it's kind of a simple to give a Kowodzie estimate for radially symmetric functions that we know before Kowodzie. Uh, it's maybe harder to write down those constants, but my, my, my general conjecture, despite the fact that there, re there cannot be like a similar analogous result for the symmetrization, is still I believe that the constant should be somehow determined by radially symmetric functions. Well, okay, so that's, uh, that's dimension one. And now the corresponding problem uh, for the real Mont-Jean-Pierre. Uh, and that's uh, essentially the, the alexandrov bakelman pucci estimate, which uh, boils down to a similar problem functions, so uh, bounded convex domain, zero on the boundary, convex, and then, so I have the, really the L1 norm uh, on the right hand side because, okay, there you don't have to So, so you have this uh, general uh, estimate, and it's known that it depends on the diameter. It's just a comparison of the ball and uh, uh, right. So, so uh, if you so, so, so how to uh, improve this dependence on the on the domain? Now, this, there is this symmetrization result for the Mont-Jean-Pierre. So, but the problem is that the the way the well the right hand side is symmetrized, the f is still symmetrized with respect to the leg measure, but the function has to be symmetrized with respect to a different measure, namely precisely the square mass integral w n minus one, which is the which is the multi volume. You know, by is a, this Alexander Fenchel is a parametric inequality. This is actually bigger than, uh, in general, than than the volume. So it's not yet uh, like uh, optimal. So uh, the denominator. What is the denominator? Ah, the omega n is the volume of the unit ball. So. <coughs> mm. Okay. So. All right, I'll be, I will have omega n later on as a <laughs> confusion of notation. Uh, okay, so, well, the, uh, the, the results, I, I can prove that it nevertheless, the, despite this, and I also, this, this kind of counterexample for symmetrization 
symmetrized exactly the same way for the real model. But despite that, you still have the, the result for, uh, for um, uh, the, in this Alexander Kelman Pucci estimate. So maybe let me quickly prove it uh, uh, because it turns out it has a some Okay, so what, uh, what I do, uh, okay, I can assume uh, the origin is in domain, uh, uh, belongs to the domain and uh, this is where the minimum of u is attained and is equal to minus one and So this is this, this V that is like that. And then, in fact, this is the domination principle. Essentially, the, the total mass of this thing below has to be bigger than the total mass of the V, which means really the uh, estimate is reduced to only this cone functions. Right? That, that's the... Right. And... This is the origin. No, it's inside. This is where the minimum is attained. This is the origin, and so its value is minus one. And the value of zero is value is zero on the boundary. Uh, right. So the key observation is that the Mont-Jamper of this, this is the volume of the gradient image, is really the volume. The gradient image is the dual of omega. That's the that's the thing. And and now, uh, yeah. So that's the optimal constant in this ABM. Really, is one over the infimum of all uh, volumes of the dual with respect to points inside uh, of the domain. And, and you know. So if you want to estimate this from above means you want to estimate this from below which is you know uh, the, the burgan milman inequality and as uh, Vlasis was uh, uh, talking about but I need it for for non necessarily symmetric domains but this display is not is not an issue really and and uh, so Master Antonis and Rubinstein proved uh, recently that, that you can take, proved uh, that you can have this inequality for this particular constant. Although, I should also mention that, that you know, if you don't care, I mean, <laughs> if you don't uh, really care about how this constant changes with the dimension, uh, it's maybe, there is a, you know, simpler, uh, simpler arguments, so, so by, by Jones theorem, really you can get some constant, much worse, but still, depending only on the uh, on the bound uh, on the, the dimension. Uh, okay, and then one more remark. So there is this. So the Kowalski's estimate for t equal to two was proved earlier by Cheng and Yao. Well, I should add, was really, uh, for, uh, yeah, the, in the written version that appeared in the Bedford survey paper, and you meant there was also kind of worked out by uh, Segrel and Persson. Uh, so that this uh, really, ah, I didn't mention. So Ak Alexander Bakenman Pucci also calls for long -term. Convex 
case, uh, so if you have a non-convex function, you take the envelope, uh, the lower envelope of convex functions, and you only have, so you only have to compute the, the Mojampere at this set of contact uh, to the initial one. So th that is a way of reducing. Uh, uh, so you can also use it for Purisop harmonic functions this way. Uh, and then you use this pointwise inequality between real and complex Mojampere equations, and they both easily give you the CoOJ estimate for P equal to 2, which is probably the simplest way of proving this way the, the uniform estimate in the Calabiano theorem, because then you at least have for some. And this, uh, and this also gives you the global Kowoji estimate uh, on a compact Keller manifold for any p bigger than 2. Uh, Was this over the observed by Chen Yao? Is that it? That, yeah, that's exactly so. So the, the Kowoji estimate for p equal to 2 is due to Chen Yao. But they didn't apply to the global. No, they didn't apply to the global. Yeah. Right, because for the global, you need the street of localization. Okay, so that's, and now, oh, okay, the, now the next two slides will be kind of uh, side remarks. So first is, an iso using this method, you can prove a certain isoperimetric inequality. Uh, so let, and this uses this method that uh, kind of uh, typical for those uh, in this symmetrization uh, result. So again, um, now assume our domain is smooth, uh, strongly convex, and V is as before, so it's, you know, this cone function, a fine and long line segments. Uh, so we know that the volume of the dual is equal to the Mont Jamper, but you can integrate by parts. So really now, since this is smooth near the boundary, this integral is really equal to the boundary in integral, and the H n minus 1 is precisely the Gauss curvature. Uh, of the boundary times the uh, modulus or the gradient of V to the N. Uh, and now you do, you apply Helder estimate. So you can, by, by Helder inequality, uh, you, you can uh, have this uh, lower bound. Uh, in fact, the, the numerator is a constant depending only on the dimension for, for the convex case, and for the denominator, there is this general formula for any V, not just ours, due to Riley, how this behaves uh, under uh, yeah, differentiation. Uh, so, and now you get H n minus 2. So it's, uh, if you differentiate this, it, uh, it, you know, this kind of evolution of Hypersurfaces. What do you say? H and minus one or H and minus one? Is the Gauss curvature. And H and minus two is the symmetric order of one thing. It's also the Hessian of the. You have N minus one eigenvalues, right? So the Gauss curvature is the product, and H and minus two is the next one uh, of uh, degree N minus two. So, so, but our V is very special because really the, it's, uh, pr the, the sublevel set are proportional, to, are proportional to omega. So this way, you get to the right-hand side, really you can easily compute what it is. 
So this way you, you really get this uh, isoparametric inequality because there is equality just for both sides thinking, oh, I, I, I found something new in convex, uh, but of course I reproved something that was known uh, before and uh, so I found this, this yeah, it was proved by Lutfak in 75 uh, by, of course, different methods, but Okay, the result is, is actually old. This H n minus two, it wasn't clear what it meant if it was not so on the boundary. boundary. Yeah. So it's really a boundary notion of the boundary. In fact, yeah, I can tell you, yeah. I tried a lot of these approaches with in the complex case also, you know, within the, the levy curvature and so on. Uh, yeah, maybe it's an actually an interesting thing to prove a counterpart of Riley formula for complex. Uh, uh, complex uh, stuff, so you know, levy, levy curvature, and, and so on. Uh, yeah. Okay, and the other, the just like offside remark. Oh boy, this is getting late. Uh, so I try to be quickly. So now there is this uh, some over 20 years ago. There is this the, you can define a green function for real Mont Jamper in the same same way as the Mai does the pluricomplex green function. And, but in fact, it's, it's simpler and it's really, you know, the value is determined by this value at the pole. It, this one is in fact never symmetric except for dimension one, turns out. But uh, you have this H omega I proved long time ago that it has to be always convex, which is not obvious at all. This one on the diagonal and smooth for non-smooth domains also, uh, always. Uh, but the kind of a funny thing is that, you know, with our, uh, the, the relation to what we talked about is that this HY is really expressed by the volume of the dual this way. So it means this H omega attains minimum at the Santawa point uh, of omega. That, that's uh, precisely where. So potentially, maybe it might be of some use. Uh, okay. And now, so now I go to uh, yeah, the second part are the, the, the Kowalski Tessier and Alexander Fenschel. Uh, yeah. How much time do I still have? Probably none, but uh, yeah. okay. Okay. Uh, so first I start the, with this inequality. I think Gromov calls it Alexander Fenschel. I think Gromov this Alexander. It definitely follows for the of Alexander Fenschel just for Hermitian matrices, right? That, that if you have a polarization of the determinant, then, then the analogous result holds. Okay, so we assume this. In fact, an easy consequence of this is the following. If A is strictly positive and B is arbitrary Hermitian, not necessarily positive, and if this, this, this thing is zero, then on B square it has to be smaller or equal than zero. So now, in fact, I have a proof, but if I ever write it down, I definitely leave it as an exercise, so maybe I'll skip the proof. It's a very simple consequence of the Alexandrov. You see, this is the proof, right? Sorry? Kojinde, okay, yeah, that's my lack of whatever. Okay, yeah, so now you tell me the, so first, you know, I have this, because I found it kind of interesting, let me first give you the, you know, kowalski tessier inequality for, uh, for uh, you know, in the version of Jean-Pierre. Uh, it's, it's this, like, you know, Brun-Minkowski kind of thing, this is like the weaker version of kowalski tessier is this one. And now, you know, there is a very simple proof of this by Jean-Pierre using Calabiao, right?
right? The, uh, so the nonlinear PD. Uh, and the proof goes as follows. Uh, yeah, you fix another Keller metric and uh, solve Calabiao uh, with, uh, yeah, just multiply the volume formed by the right constant so that it agrees and then enough to use this pointwise inequality, right? But, but it's a weaker version than, than uh, general kovansky tessier uh, which, which says this, right? And now uh, it turns out it's actually, and you tell me if you were aware of this, but, but I, there is a proof of Gromov that is essentially equally easy yeah, and uh, uses only linear, linear PD, right? So uh, you take, well, you do this, uh, find this T, define this alpha so that, uh, so that uh, this is really the, equali the equality is equivalent to this integral and uh, now we can, because the, this vanishes, uh, we can solve this, this linear, uh, linear PD. And, and, and now just use this corollary, and that's it. So, yeah, is, it, is that like obvious or because uh, uh, that, that this argument uh, somehow maybe uh, then I was reading some papers, it, it wasn't uh, that, that this Gromov paper gives you such a simple proof of the kovansky tessier yeah, that's what he did, although you have to kind of extract it. It's not like uh, the no, 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 you have to extract it. I mean, uh, it's not written exactly this way, but uh, so in particular, he kind of reproves this Alexandro inequality, and uh, essentially, yeah, that's what he did. Uh, so, but what I'm, I find it a kind of, uh, and this will be for the video for Jumper, this kind of this funny phenomenon here that Kalapiao. Okay, so now it's just, uh, uh, you know, you, you, if you do a similar thing for uh, Alexandro Fenchel, take a convex body, support function, you have the volume is equal to Mont Jamper, take a polarization, uh, and of course the, the, the multi volume is then uh, given by the, this integral. Of course, this integral is only uh, supported uh, on. The Dirac point masses. But in fact, I realized that, you know, a generalization of Alexandro Fenchel, uh, I mean, this is a generalization for Alexandro Fenchel for the Mont-Jamper operator. Uh, exact, I mean, you have uh, two bounds from below by some measure of U. That, I think, is open uh, in full generality. Uh, right, so I, and well, in fact, Alexandro Fenchel is equivalent uh, to this for, for, for the point mass. Uh, all right, so then I, the last slide, yeah, just to, for the record, uh, a corresponding conjecture. In, in fact, it's more general. Open. There is a kind of a Brun Minkowski version of this is known by DNF, but it, this is because you can solve the Dirichlet problem for the complex jumper. And here it's not really obvious what kind of linear operator you you have to use because it's probably by right. And let me the last thing. Let me mention that 
It's a funny why is that you can also have opposite inequalities. And there's this uh, result by Urban Segrel, global one, uh, where you actually have the opposite inequality. Uh, okay, but that's just the side. Okay, so that's process.